Well, fulfill Moscow's demands. Otherwise, the issue will be decided by the Russian army. Uh, that's the ultimatum that Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov is sending to Ukraine. He's demanding Ukraine uh, demilitarize and surrender territory that is now under Russian occupation. That's really been the Russian line though, uh, throughout this war. Lavrov sharing his sentiments about the war on the state news agency TASS. He accused the West of fueling the ongoing war. The Russian foreign minister also declaring that the U.S. and its Western allies want to destroy Russia. Meantime, Lavrov's comments come after Ukraine's foreign minister announced that his country is aiming to hold peace talks with the Kremlin by February. Foreign correspondent Jim Lechner is live in Lviv, Ukraine, with the latest. Jim, you've been all over the country. Last week, uh, when you were on the show, you were in Bakhmut, uh, where you'd been in Bakhmut while President Zelensky was there. You witnessed firsthand soldiers. You even helped him sign the flag that would ultimately be presented to Congress. And now Bakhmut is the focus, apparently, of Russia's military offensive. Tell us more about the ongoing fight there. Well, that's right, John, and good to see you again. We were in Bakhmud last week, and we've been following that story closely since you and I were there this summer. The Russians have made significant advances around Bakhmud. While they haven't been able to breach the city's direct defenses, they've started to encircle the city, cutting off most of the roads now uh, going in from the north and the south. So Bakhmud is hemmed in by three sides. About two months ago, the Russians declared Bakhmud as one of their focus areas, uh, they reportedly gave responsibility for capture of the city to the no notorious Wagner mercenary group who are leading the fight. And by all accounts uh, from the units we talked to, that's the case. We hear repeated stories of criminals coming from the prisons and being put out front in these assaults and then Wagner uh, behind those assaults following up. And again, while the, the Russians are unable to directly enter the city at this time, they are beginning to encircle it. Another interesting indication we're seeing of the importance of that fight is numerous Ukrainian military units that we've talked to from across the country now report that they're being deployed to Bakhmud to assist in its defense. Now, why, why is Bakhmud, I mean, when we were there, we witnessed that, that fighting. We talked about it last week. Uh, we were very close to the front lines. In fact, at one point, we were trying to get down into a valley, and we were told, well, that's the front line right there. And the sergeant who was manning that military checkpoint said, hey, I'll let you go if you want. And we discussed it and decided it was probably not the best idea. Uh, but why is Bakhmut so strategically important, Jim? In the southern portion of the Donbass salient, uh, which has been the Russians' focus area to, to secure the two main provinces of the Donbass, Bakhmut is the southern anchor. The Russians took Izium last July in the northern portion and then lost it again to the Russian, or excuse me, to the Ukrainian counteroffensive. But what the Russians really need to do is secure those two provinces of the Donbass and then secure the southern coast. Bakhmut is the link to that. It's a major road junction. It's one of the last major cities in the southern area. And if the Russians can, can, can control Bakhmud, they can control the road network in the southern portion of the Donbass salient. Again, they've encircled the city on three sides, and they're very close to doing that. However, I must also say that the Ukrainian defenders that we spoke to, to include those being decorated by President Zelensky, remain very steadfast in their resolve that they're going to hold the city, and reinforcements are now on the way to assist them in that defense. Jim, Jim, the Russians have really been going after the infrastructure uh, throughout Ukraine. Y you were in Kyiv. I think you're going back to Kyiv where there are rolling blackouts. You're in Lviv right now. You're talking about some of the blackouts. Th this is expected to continue going into the new year, is it not? Absolutely. The Russians have been putting significant pressure on the Ukrainian power generation infrastructure for at least the last two months primarily utilizing cruise missiles to strike those facilities. While the Ukrainian air defense has been very effective at knocking down probably 80 to 90 percent of the incoming missiles, some have gotten through and they've damaged that infrastructure. Now we're seeing across the country eight to 10 hours of no power a day. Uh, wow. And that means no electricity and no heat for the Ukrainians. But they've and resolved dealing, to, and, to work around that. And they're dealing with freezing temperatures. Jim, Stay warm, stay f safe. It's great to see you. Uh, say hello to the Absolutely. crew for me. Thank you.